This will not be a dry reading of the elector's ridiculous and unsubstantiated plea to a known liar. This will be an exposure that every American needs to be clued into. An open letter to the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. You remember Clapper, right? He's the guy who lied through his teeth on March 12, 2013 when he appeared before the U.S. Select Committee on Intelligence. Here's the question he was asked, and here's the answer that he gave. Last summer, the NSA director was at a conference, and he was asked a question about the NSA surveillance of Americans. He replied, and I quote here, the story that we have millions or hundreds of millions of dossiers on people is completely false. The reason I'm asking the question is, having served on the committee now for a dozen years, I don't really know what a dossier is in this context. So what I wanted to see is if you could give me a yes or no answer to the question, does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not? Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently perhaps uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Now, months later, thanks to the patriotic work of Edward Snowden in shedding light on the nefarious activities of the federal government, several publications, including The Guardian and, believe it or not, The Washington Compost Pile, released the first in a series of stories that would highlight how the NSA collected metadata from phone companies on calls made by U.S. citizens. Included in the bulk data was who called whom, for how long, and when. Subsequent stories showed that internet data was also being collected under different intelligence programs. So keep in mind as you listen to this letter who these electors are directing their letter toward. A liar who cares nothing for the privacy or security of the American people. We are electors who were selected by the voters of our states to represent them in the Electoral College on December 19, 2016. We intend to discharge our duties as electors by ensuring that we select a candidate for president who, as our founding fathers envisioned, would be, quote, endowed with the requisite qualifications, end quote. As electors, we also believe that deliberation is at the heart of democracy itself, not an empty or formalistic task. Right here, this tells us conclusively that these electors, along with most politicians, are clueless as to how our American government is supposed to operate. We are not a democracy. A democracy is a majority rule proposition. America was set up as a representative constitutional republic. Remember? Unto the republic for which the flag is supposed to stand? Or as Benjamin Franklin said, a democracy is two wolves and a lamb voting on what to have for dinner. They continue, We do not understand our sole function to be to convene in mid-December, several weeks after election day, and summarily cast our votes. To the contrary, the Constitution envisions the Electoral College as a deliberative body that plays a critical role in our system of government. Ensuring that the American people elect a president who is constitutionally qualified and fit to serve. Accordingly, to fulfill our role as electors, we seek an informed and unrestrained opportunity to fulfill our constitutional role leading up to December 19th. That is, the ability to investigate, discuss, and deliberate with our colleagues about whom to vote for in the Electoral College. We further emphasize Alexander Hamilton's assertion in Federalist Paper No. 68 that a core purpose of the Electoral College was to prevent a, quote, desire in foreign powers to gain an improper assent in our councils, end quote. The United States intelligence community has now concluded with high confidence that a foreign power, namely Russia, acted covertly to interfere in the presidential campaign with the intent of promoting Donald Trump's candidacy. During the campaign, Russia actively attempted to influence the election outcome through cyber attacks 
and our political institutions in a comprehensive propaganda campaign coordinated through WikiLeaks and other outlets. Guys, keep that phrase in mind, propaganda campaign. We're going to come back to that and learn that propaganda is a specialty of the CIA itself, not to mention mainstream news outlets. Allegations that Donald Trump was receiving assistance from a hostile foreign power to win the election began months before Election Day. When presented with information that the Russian government was interfering in the election through the course of the campaign, both in private briefings and public assessment, Donald Trump rejected it, refused to condemn it, and continued to accept their help. Donald Trump even made a direct plea to the Russian government to interfere further in the election in a press conference on July 27th, saying, quote, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing, end quote. According to reports in the proven fake news tabloids, the Washington Compost, New York Toilet Paper Times, which recently told its readers that pedophilia is a disorder, not a crime, and other fake outlets. The United States intelligence community has now concluded definitively, definitively, that the Russian interference was performed to help Donald Trump get elected. Yet even today, Mr. Trump is refusing to accept that finding. In response to the reports, the Trump Transition Office instead released a statement which called into question the validity of the United States intelligence findings and declared the election over despite the Electoral College not yet casting its votes. Trump's willingness to disregard conclusions made by the intelligence community and his continuing defense of Russia and Russian President Vladimir Putin demand close scrutiny and deliberation from the Electoral College. First of all, where's the conclusive proof that there was Russian interference and that it was performed to help Trump win? If there isn't any, they have no basis for this letter. Second, these people are shocked and are acting like the intelligence community cannot be called into question? Let me remind every single American that one of the chief purveyors of deceit misinformation and manipulation in printed and broadcast media is the CIA itself. I thought that it was a matter of uh, real concern that planted stories intended to serve a national purpose abroad um, came home and were circulated here and believed here because uh, this would mean that the CIA could manipulate the news in the United States by channeling it through some foreign country. Now we're looking at that very carefully. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to a major circulation American journal? We do have people who submit pieces to other two American journals. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in an executive session. Uh, at CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, the ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. We have quite a lot of detailed information, uh, and we will evaluate it, and we will include any um, evidence of wrongdoing or any evidence of impropriety in our final report and make recommendations. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI? 
Well, again, I think we're getting into the kind of detail, Mr. Chairman, that I'd prefer to handle in executive session. Senator, do you think that you named the new organizations in your final report? Uh, that, that remains to be decided. I think it was entirely in order for our correspondents at that time uh, to make use of the uh, CIA agent ch uh, chiefs uh, of station and other members of the executive staff of CIA as sources of information which were useful in their assessments of world conditions. Would you say that continues today? Well, I, yeah, I would think probably for a reporter it would continue today, but because of all of the revelations of the period of the 1970s, uh, it seems to me that a reporter's got to be much more circumspect in doing it now, or he runs the risk of uh, at least being looked at with considerable disfavor by the public. I think you've got to be much more careful about it. The electors continue. Separate from Mr. Trump's own denials of Russian involvement in the election, the confirmed communication between Trump's aides and those associated with the Russian election interference activity raise serious concerns that must be addressed before we cast our votes. How about before you launch an accusation, you have some real proof. Your empty words are meaningless. They continue. Trump confidant Roger Stone confirmed during the campaign that he was engaged in back channel communications with WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, responsible for releasing much of the Russian hacked Democratic communications, <laughs> which proved that Clinton was involved in rigging the election in nefarious activities and indicated that he was aware of the hacked content prior to its release. Trump foreign policy advisor Carter Page reportedly, reportedly, visited Moscow in July of this year just prior to the release of hacked DNC communications, during which it was believed, believed? He met with the Putin aide in charge of Russian intelligence on the US election. Okay guys, let's see the proof. Where's the proof? Page returned to Moscow this week where he claimed to be meeting with Russian business and thought leaders. So it's up to you guys to prove that he did more than that. In addition to Donald Trump and his aides' conduct, revelations about their further involvement with the Russian government over the course of the campaign demand further investigation, as well as full disclosure of findings from any ongoing or closed investigative efforts. And then they give these five points. The electors are required to know from the intelligence community, you know, that deceptive propaganda MK ultra creating community, whether there are ongoing investigations into ties between Donald Trump, his campaign or associates, and Russian government interference in the election, the scope of those investigations, how far those investigations may have reached, and who is involved in those investigations. We further require a briefing on all investigative findings as these matters directly impact the core factors in our deliberations of whether Mr. Trump is fit to serve as President of the United States. Additionally, the electors will separately require from Donald Trump, now get this, conclusive evidence that he and his staff and advisors did not accept Russian interference or otherwise collaborate during the campaign and conclusive disavowal and repudiation of such collaboration and interference going forward. When was the last time someone asked you to prove that you did not do something or that you did not say something or that you did not go somewhere? It's impossible to prove a negative. The burden of proof rests completely on the hacks who are bringing the accusations. It's not up to Trump to prove that he did or did not do something. We hope that the information and actions described in this letter will be provided in an expeditious manner so that we can fulfill our constitutional duty as electors. Then they sign their little paper. Look guys, here's the deal. We have a gaggle of misguided morons asking a known liar who is the head of a highly secretive, deceptive, and propaganda-oriented organization to substantiate what cannot be substantiated. So America, what do you think about this letter and the people who signed it? 
Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and share it on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to see more videos like this, click that big red subscribe button down there, and as soon as I upload a video, you'll be one of the first to see it. If you want to support this channel, pick up one of these hard-hitting, conversation-starting shirts. You'll find the link in the description below, along with a plethora of other hard-hitting, high-impact designs. Remember, guys, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance. And indifference to this notion is the means by which the people will secure their own oppression. Let's stop securing our own oppression and let's start today. I'll see you guys in the next video.